I cannot okay. hear you. Yeah, I just put my sound on. Thanks a lot, uh, JB. You're welcome. Uh, introduction, the overview of all the participants. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go through a few slides to talk about uh, what's going to happen after week one. So um, I find it very disturbing to talk to myself uh, and not seeing anybody. And also, usually, the beginning of Renac School is very energetic because you know there's uh, all the students coming in and uh, all, all the instructors which are present. We've, we've, we've been doing that for a while. So generally there's cheers, there's a little bit more of uh, action than uh, on the Zoom. So I, I think, I mean, that's my first time doing Brenac School uh, fully virtually. And that's my first sort of impression that it's awfully quiet in there. So if, if you feel like putting your video on and cheering, please, by all means, <laughs> I would appreciate it. But otherwise, uh, if you're in your pajamas, I totally understand um, your, your, your wish for privacy and uh, you can keep the video off. Okay, so um, Brenac School 2020, it's uh, the third time we're doing this. And uh, it's, it's a course that has a structure that's not qu quite common, although it's using some fairly standard uh, component. Uh, the recipe is, uh, is uh, quite new. And uh, I mean, there, there's a couple of motivation for, for Brenac School and the format that uh, we, we chose to develop. And the first one is really to get good at programming. So here I've inserted a little tweet from uh, Olivia Guest, who, who is a, a researcher doing a lot of neuroscience, deep learning. Uh, if you don't follow her on Twitter, I would advise uh, to follow her because she, she's got uh, quite insights and she posts a lot. So she's saying, circling back to undergrads in psychology, they should be taught how to code, but it's also true for PhD students. You need to learn to code. You can do it. We can help you. It's not as hard as you think, and it will help you in the long run, including to get a job. So obviously, I fully concur to, with that. It may be completely obvious for some of you who are more of a technical background and join the Brenac School. Maybe you come from uh, computer engineering. Uh, computer science and uh, you already code then that that but uh, I, I'm a prof in psychology and uh, there's a lot of students uh, who are still not coding and uh, uh, and I I think by now I, uh, most of them understand that it could be a good thing but they don't necessarily know where to start and where to get to the next level after an introductory course so I think I mean one of the objectives of the Brenac school is, uh, is to help people sort of uh, identify the resources that they can get to that next level and make coding really part of their workflow and essentially the go-to uh, approach to do anything, essentially. I mean, at some point, you're going to start automating, you know, doing shopping uh, through the command line, and then you know, you know it's, it, you've mastered it. It's, it's part of your life. Uh, the other sort of, of uh, simple suck that came into the design of the course is that uh, Jack van der Plaats was another excellent uh, researcher, I believe now at Google, uh, who you can uh, follow on Twitter, said, my advice on learning Python, don't set out to learn Python, choose a problem you're interested in and learn, it to, s and learn to solve it with Python. And that's something I can personally relate uh, a lot with. Uh, it's just learning by doing is, uh, is just very efficient. In general, it's uh, particularly efficient when we're talking about things like practical skills, like co coding. Uh, it's a lot about problem solving, being able to just find the right information on the web. And quite frankly, listening to, to uh, lectures, it's giving you a taste for what it could be like, but you only really learn it by starting to do it. So basically the idea of Brenac School, the basic one was to say, just we're gonna take a couple of weeks and let people do their thing. You know, they're gonna work on some things they want uh, to learn and uh, they're gonna learn it that way. It's gonna be very easy, very little work for us. Um, soon we realized we needed to put a little bit more into it. Uh, I'm gonna to get to that in, the, in a minute, but I think the basic idea is just that, like choose something you want to learn and, and learn it. Uh, I would say that those skills, it's, uh, they're, they're really essential. 
not just because they're they're efficient, but they also open up a, a new type of science. So I think that's another realization that really motivated the creation of the Brenac School is that traditionally, when you took a neuroscience, cognitive neuroscience training, uh, you would uh, mostly learn about you know the brain and neurons and things like that. And of course, you would also have some more like technical courses, like maybe in statistics, to learn to implement rigor rigorously your data analysis. So traditional neuroscience typically live at the intersection of those two things. But more and more, uh, people start uh, first analyzing very large data sets, and second, using some fairly advanced modeling tools. And uh, really, you, you bring a lot of skills from the computer science field. And coding is maybe the most obvious one, but there are other ones that we're going to cover during the Brenac School, like containerization, uh, high-performance computing. We're going to be uh, talking about that as well. So really now you, you need those uh, unicorn students, the ones that you know, know how to code, uh, know how to use a supercomputer, and also a lot about statistical modeling, machine learning, but also about the brain. So those students that they are in this intersection of those three fields, really there's no good curriculum right now to train them, except that more and more we see people who do a PhD, that's, that's what they need to do. So we need a tool to basically help people get up to speed and fill the gaps they had in their training. Whether they come more from technical background or more from a neuroscience background, doesn't really matter. They, all the students that enter this program, they, they have big gaps. And uh, I mean, some of us are, are working to change the academic curriculum from the ground up. Uh, so now at UDM, which I know is the most in psychology, we have coding courses and stats courses, pretty extensive from the undergrad level. But for those who, who come uh, already at the PhD level, uh, we, we were hoping to sort of, yeah, help fill, fill this gap uh, in a very personal way. You choose what you want to work on and, and we help you. So whatever it is that you're missing, hopefully uh, during the next four weeks, you're gonna be able to, to feel a lot or at least get ready to fill it in the next year and know where to start. So just a little bit uh, about uh, why the hack in Brain Hack School. Uh, well, really, uh, it's, it's a reference to the hacker movement. And uh, the hacker movement is typically associated with, you know, people breaking in a bank account, stealing, stealing uh, credit card numbers, things like that. So it doesn't really have a really good reputation. But really, the hacker movement is originates from like the 70s and uh, uh, was uh, spearheaded by uh, figures like Richard Stallman, who you have a picture here. Um, and I think that the, the basic idea of, of being a hacker is really uh, appreciating playful cleverness. Now, that may involve breaking into someone else's computer, sure. But it's not a requirement. There's many ways you can be a hacker. And uh, I think one of the key things about the hacker movement is that they, they, they found ways to collaborate. So a signature of, of, of hacking is uh, community-driven software, free software. And they set up a lot of the tools that now are used uh, in, uh, in software engineering, like GitHub, uh, which also are key to, to do collaborative, high-quality collaborative science. So. Uh, really, a, a lot of the tools are going to be covered uh, uh, in, in the next four weeks. They have their roots in the, in the hacker movement. So Brain Hack is not just to use a, a cool sounding uh, name. Uh, it, it's really, I think, literally uh, we are uh, building on top of uh, what this community has established and, uh, and ed helping it grow you know, new branches uh, outside of pure software. And, and growing into science, but but really we're following the, the hacker philosophy uh, all, all the way, essentially in, in our approach to science that we are we're going to be covering here. And uh, a key aspect is that sharing is good, and with digital technology, sharing is easy. So we're going to try to share a lot in the next four weeks, whether it's through Slack, through Zoom, through GitHub. Um, we're, we're gonna we're gonna ask you to use a collaborative tool uh, intensively. So we can help you. And I would say that the, the big difference uh, a few slides ago, I told you that the main idea of Brain Hack School is simply, you know, 
choose a project you want to do and do it by yourself. Well, why do I need to register to Brenac School then? Well, uh, first of all, that helps you clear up your schedule, which is good. You get some credits for it, which is even better. But most importantly, you're going to have a community here, which you may actually uh, keep in, in, in the years to come. So learning by yourself can be incredibly hard. But here, if you have a question, uh, you're going to have people to answer you. And some of those people may be actually world expert in the particular questions you have. So th that's what an art tool is going to bring to you. Uh, first and, and foremost, I would say, the, the community of instructors and mentors we're going to bring together, and also all your peers. Because uh, really, the, the group that's uh, registered, who's registered, is uh, of uh, great quality. And there's lots and lots of skills just in all the, the students participating to the school. And hopefully, we're going to see a lot of, of, of you helping out each other, learning from each other. In terms of the broad, broad uh, topic we're, we're going to be covering, uh, week one, uh, JB uh, presented it. Those are really the basis almost everyone is uh, um, expected to use some of those uh, those tools we're going to be covering in, in week one. Now, you're not restricted to that. You, you can also touch to, to other more advanced uh, things. Uh, in week two, we'll talk a little bit about different open data you, you may be able to use in your, in your projects. Uh, in particular, uh, some of you may decide to dive more deeper in high performance computing or, or machine learning. Uh, some of you may request to have uh, more intro courses on your imaging, which we'll be able to provide in week two, because for those with a technical background, maybe you don't know uh, uh, as much as you would like on your imaging. We'll also have some lectures on different types of data visualization uh, coming in, in week three, and week three will, will put a lot of emphasis on visualization. So in terms of structure of the course, today is week one. It's a, it's a credit course at McGill. Uh, QLSC 612. So th that's kind of uh, the, the basis, the fundamentals. You, you want to use the tools we're going to be covering this, this week. Uh, so it's going to help sort of uh, lev level the playing field a little bit. Like we, we know that everybody in the course know about those things and may be able to incorporate them in their, in their projects. So even if you're a little bit more advanced, maybe some of it is going to be boring for you. Uh, but, you know, through Zoom, it's easy enough to put your camera off and, uh, and just, you know, listen uh, with one ear. But uh, even if you're technically advanced, there's lots of things you're likely going to discover through that week. Uh, I'm thinking about containerization, for, for example, is not something that traditionally is covered in, uh, even in some computer science uh, courses. And in any case, that means that coming week two, we we can expect a number of things to be to be known. Uh, week two is uh, going to be about project definition. So most of the of the days will be just spent in so-called free hacking. So you'll be able to just have time to work on what is it you, you want to work on, essentially formalize it a little bit. Now you'll have um, uh, deliverables. Uh, you, you'll, you'll have to write a written description of what you want to do. You'll have to give a little pitch, a small presentation about it. Every day, we're going to be following up with you. There's going to be a project clinics, instructors getting in touch with you, seeing if you're, if you're doing progress, answering your question, possibly connecting you with others to solve your problems. And uh, also, by the end of the week, we're going to organize a, 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 a little event where people can, uh, based on the, all the presentation, decide to join into teams. So you'll be able to do your project with other people, other peers, and uh, to have a, a truly collaborative experience. So it's not required. You'll also be able to do uh, your project alone if you wish to do so. But uh, we're, we're gonna try to essentially hook you up with the right people so you can, you can really work collaboratively uh, during week three and week four. So week three is mostly, mostly working. Uh, we'll still offer tutorials if, if need be. We'll, we'll offer a few of them uh, on, on, on specific topics like visualization. But really, that's where uh, the, the schedule will be the most clear because we really want you to be able to sit down on your computer and get things done. Uh, once again, every day you'll have uh, you'll touch up with with uh, instructors, and and we'll also start inviting external mentors, international people, if we feel they can bring something to your project. Lots of people have expressed interest to help. 
So you may be able to interact with uh, some top, top researchers in the field, depending on whether that makes sense or not. And finally, week four is a project wrap up. Uh, you're going to have to finalize a number of deliverables and present them. So that's going to that's going to be that. Uh, in terms of the evaluation for QLSC, the quiz this week are 100% of the evaluation. Now, if you're taking the project-based courses either in Concordia or at uh, at UDM, uh, the coding quiz will be part of your grade, but it will be only 10%. Uh, then on week two, you'll have a, a little pitch to give about your project, a five minutes presentation, that's going to be 10%. There will also be a, a, a page about it. We'll, we'll, get, we'll give you the instruction, but there's going to be a template for you to fill. It will end up actually on the website of the Brenner School. Then on week three, uh, you'll have to present a, a data visualization. Uh, once again, 10% uh, of the grade. Uh, week four, the final presentation will be almost 30% of the grade. Um, and then we'll review all your deliverables, the overall achievement you've made during the four weeks, and that will be 30% of the grade. Now, all those things don't add up to 100% uh, because we count 3% uh, participation uh, for each week. So we keep track of who's registering to the, to the lectures, and uh, we, we just expect you to show up. So if you show up, you get that that uh, two percent uh, very easily uh, and if you don't well you don't so that's that uh, i'm almost uh, done uh, i just want to emphasize like you know this is the first time we're doing this virtually uh, i think we'll keep a virtual component uh, moving forward i'm really excited about some of the opportunities we we have by by moving to this online format now the, the sort of hub of the of the course is going to be Slack. So I think everybody's on, on there now. I'm going to close the invitation I had opened anyway because you know, the class has started. Uh, please be on Slack. We're going to be posting uh, updates there, but also it's going to be a chance for you to reach out if you have questions, um, uh, connect with your team. So we, we'll uh, actually archive the logs of the, of the project channels that you're going to have to create. It's going to be part of what we're going to be looking at as deliverables. So connecting through Slack is really part of the experience. Uh, uh, Samuel Gay has prepared a, a very nice uh, sort of a tutorial about how to use Slack efficiently. So if you go on the website of the school, there's now a new tab, which is called Documents. And uh, there's two right now. Uh, the first one is our code of conduct. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But the second one is how to use Slack. So please read through that reach out if you have questions. Uh, Slack is, is a really awesome tool and uh, I think we can essentially replace a lot of the uh, real life interaction by Slack and actually be better with it. And the uh, beauty is that uh, Slack is going to be, it's a tool you can keep using in the future. So if you like your community experience during Brenhack School, maybe you're going to want to, to keep going. There's uh, something called brenhack.matermoots.org which is a permanent Slack, which runs very much like the, the Brenac School Slack. So uh, that's, uh, that's something to, to discover already during this week. You can tweet about the school. Uh, please use the hashtag uh, Brenac School. Uh, although, I mean, video lecture don't make for great uh, pictures and selfies, you know, whatever, we can, we can still do it. Um, and finally, there's a, a GitHub organization called Brenac School 2020, uh, on which we'll upload the project. So for, for this first week, it's really the QLSC uh, GitHub that's important. But starting next week, we're going to start asking you to create projects there, and so on and so forth. And that's where the trail of your of your involvement in in the four weeks long school is going to be. So please have fun. This is a very sort of uh, how to say that? You know, the, the school is, is about giving you time to learn the way you want. So it's, it's uh, I think, a real treat compared to a classical course that requires you to jump through hoops that have been designed by others. So just try to enjoy this time. Uh, please help us create this open, enthusiastic space, mostly through Slack, but all the other uh, events we're going to put together. 
please be respectful, please be kind. Uh, we have tried to write up some guidelines uh, about the conduct we expect during the school. I think a lot of it is kind of common sense. Some of it is uh, a little bit, uh, you know, requires more uh, self-reflection, like microaggressions, which are quite common and we, we try to get rid of. So if you don't know what that is, uh, you, can, you can read the code. And also if you feel like somebody uh, has uh, breached that code, uh, that you've been, you know, the victim of harassment or whatever disrespectful behavior, please do reach out to, to me or any of the course organizers. There's also direction on that document and we'll try to follow up and address the problem uh, by either uh, trying to change the behavior of the individuals involved or ask those individuals to just quit the course if we feel like this is not uh, resolvable. Um, we're really committed to have a diverse, inclusive community and we'll be serious about making sure uh, people respect uh, each other in, in, that, in that setup. So uh, the Brand Act School is very ambitious training. We only can put it off because we are many people with a very specialized training. And to achieve that, we had to pull resources from uh, multiple institutions. McGill, University of Montreal, Polytechnique, Concordia. We're already credited at three of these institutions and it's only been three years we exist. So uh, you may not be familiar with the time scales of academia, but this is actually extraordinary. It's very hard to pull off. We had to convince lots of different people. And I have to say uh, all the institutions have been incredibly uh, supportive. Uh, I think it's because they realized that in 2020, we need those type of trans transdisciplinary uh, training these new ways of uh, approaching training and that they are not currently providing that. So everybody has been really enthusiastic in pitching in and very selfless, uh, very generous with their time, with their resources. So I feel like very privileged to be part of this. Uh, I don't do much at the end of the day. It's really like this community of, of instructors and, and, and professors pitching in. So I just want to give a huge thank you to every one of you that have helped, you know, getting there and who are going to help making it awesome once again. And that includes all the participants. As I said, you're here to learn, but you're also here uh, to, to help others to learn. So happy hacking. <laughs>